Alrighty then. Um. Hmm. Uh, before we start, you may be thinking, Otis, why are you making a new what if? Like, right now, when you have, like, what, three to five other what ifs to do? Well, first of all, this is a redo of one of the um, what ifs actually deleted, and that is, what if Deku was abandoned? Secondly, I wanted to make this ship for the longest. Ever since I started my YouTube channel, I told you guys I wanted to do this ship between Deku and this specific person. If you can't think of it, I'll tell you as we go along with the story. So, yeah. But anyways, um, let's start. So, everything goes as normal. Deku gets told that he's quirkless and stuff like that. And yeah. Now, Mitsuki, she doesn't hate Deku for being quirkless. She's still like canon. Still nice and sweet, as she should be, but strict towards Bakugo. Mostly I would call it abuse, but it's not really abuse, it's discipline. And quite honestly, Bakugo kind of deserves it. He needs more discipline than anyone I could ever think of. So, yeah, that's kind of like discipline instead of abuse. But anyways, yeah, everything goes as per normal. Inko completely hates Deku. She hates him. She likes nothing about him. Now, Inko, like a whole week after, like, legitimately taking care of Deku after being told that he was quirkless, she got tired of it immediately. She's, she was, she's just thinking to herself, why, 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 why am I taking care of a useless kid that won't even be able to pay me back in the future with anything special? The only thing he could be is a police officer and they don't even get much. It's completely useless. As she thinks, I'll, I'll just start over. As she proceeds to grab Izuku and drive, just an endless driving. She just continues driving to a forest. She says that she was going on a road trip with Izuku, and Izuku says, do I need to bring any clothes, any toys, or anything? She says, no, 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 just come as you are. And you may be wondering, why did she let Izuku take his All my figurines? Because that's going to be for his younger sibling. Um, yeah. That's going to be for his younger sibling. She's going to take everything his. Izuku, um, he didn't need to pack his all, um, his journals because son got them shits everywhere. He just pulled them out from thin air, so he don't really need to hide those. As, you know, Deku proceeds to, well... Go to a forest with Inko. Iz Inko tells Izuku to, well, go and explore. As she says, she'll come get him in an hour. Which, you know, is totally cap. So Izuku, he goes and explores. And it's legitimately been an hour. And she's thinking that his mom should be getting him by now. But when she goes, like, he's not that far. He's in the same spot that he came in. Like, not in the same spot, but, like, at least five, five feet away. Yeah five feet away so he didn't really hear her start up rev up that engine and just zoom off so this one all might's gonna be a power power hungry person so yeah because he feels like um he still has like that heroic attitude but it's kind of like um being held back by his pride and like his um whole power hungry attitude so yeah like he he like he still has that like hero part like he wants to save people be the like symbol of peace but he's but he thinks that you can't be anything in this world without power so yeah that's kind of how it works so when hearing about izuku she's just gonna say oh my god such a useless brat or shit like that so yeah <clears throat> so Kasuke still bullied Deku. He didn't even get to finish. He just started for a whole weekend and it just ended. But anyways, let's continue with that. So, basically, Deku, he's in this forest. It's nighttime. He doesn't know what to do. He's scared as hell because he's a four-year-old child. What do you expect? You're a four-year-old child in the forest. What are you going to do? Oh, shit, sure, let me pull up on a bear and beat that nigga up. No, you can't beat that nigga up. Why? Not only is it not a normal bear, but that nigga can retaliate and it has super strength or some other, ab or some other abnormal ass shit. So, you're not surviving a night. That is if you weren't Deku. Or me. But anyways, yeah. So, Deku being big brain. 
talking is thinking of hero journals, like some random hero and stuff like that. Some hero that um that has like a whole like TV show in the wilderness. Deku watched it a lot because you know Deku liked heroes a lot, so Deku did the same thing he did about making a whole like um tree house. Well, not really a tree house, but like a little home in a tree. But Deku can't do that now, so Deku just had to dig a hole, just dug a hole, and took a lot of like um. A lot of branches, a lot of vines, tied them up together, and, like, he barely found any vines. The vines, that's rare to find in that forest, because he wasn't really deep into that forest. It was just, like, some small-ass forest. So, Deku, he just proceeds to just do that, and Deku, he finishes that, and, like, Deku still remembers. He remembers how to, he's gonna remember how to w read, walk, and talk, and stuff like that. I'm not gonna do anything to Deku like that. But anyways, yeah. So, Deku, he's gonna do that. And, you know. Deku. Oof, what was that? Hmm. Anyways, Deku, he proceeds to, um, what was I thinking? Alright, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Somebody asked me on Discord if I script my what ifs. I'm gonna be honest, I script nothing. Why? Because I changed my storyline ahead of time. So, just like I'm doing right now. I may be saying, what am I doing? But I'm actually changing the whole storyline as I speak. So, yeah. Um, but anyways, um, Deku... <coughs> He proceeded to make a hole, tied the um, sticks together to make like a little um, little platform, something like that, a little, little platform, a little platform. Like it's about like, if it, if it was on a grid, if it was like on a grid, it'd be at least like um, a, four, a four by four, yeah. And he put it over the hole and you know, he just slept in that hole, that dirty hole with a lot of, well, I wouldn't say like muddy water or ushy water, just dirt, just dirt and bugs. And Deku really didn't sleep comfortably because, well, all those bugs kept bothering him and many more. So, yeah. So Deku had to wake up in the middle of the night. So Deku didn't really get much sleep. Deku got about, mm, about like an hour of sleep until, well, the nocturnal animals came. And they just started making noise, like the owl with the hoo-hoos and shit like that. Um, there are even some daytime animals that actually stay up at night. There are some wolves. Well, wolves always stay up at night. But there are some bears, some bats out. And the bats are actually... The bats and the owls. The bats, the owls, and the wolves. They're the ones that actually piss him off the most. Because they're, they're, they are making some loud-ass noises. Loud, really loud noises. Which is really irritating, Deku. And he does not like it at all. Deku wants to say something, but before he even said, before it comes out of his mouth, he remembers. I'm a four-year-old child. Compared to them, I'm completely nothing. This is unfamiliar territory to me. So, if I were to go outside and actually fight them, no matter where I run, they probably would have caught me and killed me by then. So, Deku just stopped himself. So, yeah. So, he does that, and, you know, he proceeds to, well... Just stay, just stay for that whole night, just awake. He just stays awake that whole night, and he's really tired, really, really tired. As Deku actually gets, actually, by the time it's like four, Deku, he finally falls asleep from mental exhaustion and from being so tired. And basically, he just sleeps while getting annoyed by the bugs. He's, he wakes up and he's still tired. But he remembers, I have to eat before I die of starvation. So, Deku, he finds some, um, some bugs. Mm, some bugs, yeah, some bugs. He finds some bugs. Not like some really big bugs or anything like that. No, just like some tiny insects and stuff like that that you can eat. Mm, kind of like a cockroach. Yeah, you can eat cockroaches if you didn't know, but it's not cockroaches he found. He found, um... Some snails, some slugs, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Now, Deku, he just cooked them over a fire. I know it's it's a bad thing to do to eat them without, like, parental supervision or, like, a professional's help. But still, let's just not do that today, alright? As Deku, he just ate it, and he felt rejuvenated. As Deku says, what am I gonna do? As Deku, he knows he can't get out because, well, he's too far in now. Because searching all night, he just built a random hole and he woke up, he looked around and he saw there is no getting out of this forest. 
he doesn't know his way back to the city or anything like that. So he says, ah, well, can't get out. The only thing I can do is go, go deeper in. Oh my God, what is he doing now? Uh, if you heard that thud, that was my brother doing some dumb shit. I don't know what he dropped, but he dropped something. Hold on. Okay. Um, interesting. Um, but anyways, so yeah. So, Deku. So yeah, he thinks, can't get out. Only thing I can do is go in. But I'm afraid that if I go in, I'll probably die. As he thinks, <sighs> The only thing I can do is get stronger so I can survive in a place like this. For all I know, there could even be dragons in here. And he was not wrong at all. He, he was nowhere near wrong. If niggas like Ryuku, a regular fucking human, can become a dragon, what makes you think a whole lizard can become a legitimate dragon to actually merc a nigga? So, I, I don't know, man. I, 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 I don't know how natural disasters don't just occur... Like, once a day in the My Heroverse. Like, this is a world of quirks. Natural disasters such as a big-ass lizard known as a dragon attacking your ass. Giant golems made of earth, earth spirits, fire spirits, many other calamities crashing upon planets. I, I, don't, I don't know how you're still alive to actually tell the tale of you becoming a hero. Your ass, for all you know, you could be walking outside one day. Like, imagine yourself in the My Heroverse. Like, this, is, this legit should be the My Heroverse right now. Imagine you just walking outside one of these days, like out of nowhere. You look up, and you look like a you look far away. Like it's about like a whole like five hundred miles away from you. You see a whole thunderstorm. You look to your left, firestorm. Right, water storm. And you look to your um to to your south. No, not your to your south. Your west. Your west. Look north, east, south, and west. Yeah. So you look to your west. Or your left, not your right. So your right was the one with the firestorm. You look to your left and you just see a wicked breeze just blowing in the good. And you look up and you're wondering, wait a damn minute. And then you just think to yourself real quick, if the main four elements are all around me, the only things that could happen to me are either me being swallowed by darkness or a black hole or anything that has to do with light or any other element. And then all of a sudden, you look up and you see a thunderbolt coming down on you. And the last thing you can think of before you die is, I spoke too soon. And you're dead. That's legit how it should be. I, I don't know how All Might's still alive, All For One's alive. Like, I understand. You have immortality. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you should have at least came across, like, something like a dragon once a, once in your life. Or at least some big-ass demon inside the, um, waters or some shit like that. Hell, for all we know, what if you, like, y'all niggas should have been dragged to the underworld. <laughs> like, shit. Because I know damn well there's, there's a nigga in the My Heroverse that has the ability to make portals to hell and heaven. That nigga, if that nigga exists, nah, bro, it's clip for everybody. That nigga's raining down angels and demons, fallen angels, archangels, nah, bro. Mm -mm. That is a place I don't want to be. Forget quirks, I'm scared of natural disasters. Tch, must have been smoking the wrong pack if you really thought I was going to go to the My Hero verse. Like, what you smoking, bro? Let me get some of that. Like, let me get some. Like, bro, you really thought I was about to go to the My Hero verse? Nah, must have been smoking some wrong pack, bro. Hell, almost every anime I wouldn't go to. There is no anime that I would say for myself that I would actually go to. Like, the only anime. Nah, I can't even think of any animes right now. <laughs> Shit. There is no anime. Because I mostly watch, like, shonen anime. And <laughs> Shit, yo, you, I'm not going to lie. One of the first animes I thought was, of was Data Live. Like, when I first saw I was like, this shit seemed normal. Until I saw the phenomenons, I was like, oh, hell no. I'm gonna stay inside. Uh uh. Mm -mm. Uh uh. Nah, bro. If I was in Data Live, I need a bunker under my house. Uh uh. We're staying inside. We're doing school online. Like, I don't know why niggas have not thought of, you know what? Let's do school online. Why are we doing it at the school where we could die quicker than normal? Like, bro. He, like, anime characters really trying to die real quick, huh? Shit, Goku should have been dead a long time ago. But I'll be explaining that in my new what if, but not right now though. Well, anyways, let's get back to the story. <clears throat> so Deku 
he doesn't do regular training. Yes, he does. I'm joking. He does regular training and stuff like that, but he also comes into contact with animals like moths, butterflies, big ass ones too, like the size of a wolf or bear. Yeah, size of a bear. Now, it's not like they're biting him or anything. No, it's just the wings just getting annoying him. Like, over time, he actually met a butterfly. It was a really nice butterfly. He, he liked that butterfly a lot. He was friends with that butterfly. The butterfly and him got along real nice. Until one of these days, a moth came along and ate that butterfly. Which severely pissed him off. He grabbed the wings of that moth, pulled them out, and proceeded to beat the living crap out of the little twig part of, or the body, like the head, thorax, and abdomen of that. I'm so confused how I still remember that. Like the, like the first time I learned about that was in like what, first and second grade? <laughs> Like, I'm all the way in ninth grade, about to be 10th grade, and my ass is like, wait a damn minute. How do I remember this? But anyways, yeah, I don't know how you still alive, though. <laughs> so, it's dead. And Deku, he feels significantly stronger after killing it. It's kind of like leveling, but it's not like leveling. So, yeah, he just feels slightly stronger because he went against a strong opponent. Now, Deku, he just proceeded to go on with his day. Now, he decided that he's going to take the wings of those, that moth and eat them legitimately eat them because he he can only eat bugs right now he can't really eat anything like a frog because if that moth is big as hell what is a frog gonna look like if that frog's big as hell what are lizards gonna look like <laughs> <I'm> like shit <laughs> like Deku he's practically scared and Deku's not even close to the middle of that forest not even close like that forest uh-uh Inko maybe like, Inko did the biggest dick move of her life. You wanna know what she did? Inko did some illegal shit. It may be some random ass for us that you may be thinking of. No, 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 no. Inko had a friend that had the ability to teleport people. Inko, she told that friend to teleport them to a real, like a, like a, like a whole, like, um, like a whole, like a whole, hmm, secluded island. A secluded island that even heroes are scared to go in heroes all for one stuff like that they're scared to go inside that pl inside of that as basically or to be more exact it's a planet it's a planet it's a planet like earth like the people like the people discovered it but but the only person that could get them there is Inko's friend but she but he yes he never actually he had never actually revealed himself he only revealed it to Inko, and Inko kept that secret for a lifetime. And Inko, she she tell, told him to teleport Izuku to that planet. And that planet is mostly forest. There is no... Like, and the whole city, it's tiny as hell. It's not big, it's just tiny. So, she legitimately banished Deku from Earth. Like, I don't know how a mother could do that to their son, but like, shit, if you were to do that to me, uh-uh. I'm getting my stuff. I'm getting my ass beefy. And when I come back, I'm being the living shit out of you. I don't care if you're my mom. You could be my best friend too. I'm getting beefy as hell. I'm knocking the fuck out of you. But you're not surviving my hits after that. But anyways, she left him on that, on that, on that thriving planet with no other life but Izuku and those animals. As basically, she proceeds on with her life over time. Her friend introduced him to All Might, or Mini Yagi. Yes, not Big All Might, just Mini Yagi. And like, they, they got along, they talked and stuff like that until All Might revealed himself. And Inko, they, they decided to get married and stuff like that. And basically, Inko talked about Izuku and All Might was disrespecting him. And Izuku, every time that All Might was disrespecting him, he sneezed. Because that's how it is in anime. And it's basically, this time we skipped to like... 13, 14 years later. Yeah, 13, 14. No, 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 no. 12? Yeah, 12 years later. And that goes 16 about now. So, yeah. Now, this is like something, like, this is like a different universe of Teen Titans. 
Like, everything is still the same. Yeah, if you, if you know who this is, yes, you know who this is. So, we skip to the Teen Titans. Um, more exactly, Raven and Azrath, or Hell. Yes, the ship is Raven. Yes, if you all remember, ever since I started this channel, I've wanted to do a Raven ship, but your boy never got the chance to. So, he's been real depressed, and then he decided, you know what, I'm actually going to do it. So, back in Azrath. Her and, damn, I legit forgot her dad's name. You know, it, it hurts, really. It hurts to have said the name more than 50 times in my head while thinking of this what if, to then remember, to then forget it when I'm saying it. <sighs> Hold on. Okay, then. I remember. All right, I, I searched it up. All right, that's done. All right, so... And I almost forgot it again. You know, it, it hurts to have my memory. I can remember a lot of things. But the thing is, I don't remember the small things. I remember long, 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 long things. Not, 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 that, not, not that type of thing. Calm down. So I'm talking about, like, things that I can remember, like... For example, like, my what ifs, I'll remember that. Like, if you're telling me a sentence, hey, if I'm talking to you... And you tell me one whole sentence, like a whole hour, and then the next hour, you're like, yo, you remember what that sentence I told you at the beginning? Uh-uh, I'm, I'm not remembering that. I'm like, wait, what? What sentence? You said something? Like, I'm legit gonna look at you like you're a retard. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So, Raven and Trigon got into a fight, and Raven was in a severely weakened state, and this is when she still has, like, the purple robe, not the white one. Yeah, in the end, she's gonna have that white robe and shit like that, so, yeah, and... She got into a fight with Trigon, and, you know, she could barely escape after fighting with him for at least two hours, since she wasn't strong enough. And Trigon, he had a seal put on him. He had a seal put on him, which, well, kept him in Azeroth. Since, well, he's the conqueror of worlds, the gods can't really have this nigga on the loose like some normal ass shit. Like, shit, Trigon, he's still... So, Trigon, what he does is basically brush up on his skills when he was a weak demon, like, a, a weak demon, like, um, shit like that. Like, basically, just going through the basics to get stronger and stronger. But, even though he was in that severely weakened state, he still beat Raven, which, which says something. It, it says something. But anyways, Raven... She gets into the forest, all bloodied, and she passes out. As you know, Deku, 17 years old, he does not have this form yet. His hair is long, though. It's not spiky and shit like that. No, it's just, uh, it's just messy, like his hair. It's just a uh, green, bushy, messy hair. And basically, he just walks around the forest after, well, just killing a few bears, wolves, and, well, for the second time in his life, a dragon. Like, Raven could not calculate where she was teleporting. She just teleported to some random place that she, that, that was just nearby. And the place that was nearby was near, actually, well, Azrath. Well, the portal to Azrath. The portal to Azrath is big as hell. Big as hell. It's actually next to a black hole, but it's way bigger than that black hole. So, to actually get into the portal of Azrath, you have to first get past that black hole. Which should possibly be practically immortal unless you're at impossible if you're not from Azrath. But anyways, yeah. So, <clears throat> so basically, um, so basically, Raven, she passes out. And Izuku, he just killed a dragon and, you know, he's passing by. He's basically being a passerby because he's trying to get to his house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and basically, he finds Raven on the way back. Like he is, like he is legit drag. Like he has like a rope, a man-made a, a rope. You may be wondering, what did he make the rope out of? Hmm, what 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 did he make the rope out of? He made it out of vines, so it's not really that strong as well. Regular ropes. Well then. Deku, he's still dragging the dragon with that, and, you know, it's a rope dragging the dragon, the, um, wolf, and the bear. There's basically, he sees Raven, and 
he goes to Raven. Like, this is kind of like exercise for him. Like, the dragon's body is exercise for him. So, he trains with the dragon's body for at least a week, and then he just cooks it, because that's when it actually is good, because just how it normally is could possibly, like, once, like, after you kill the dragon, after you kill the dragon, the dead corpse could possibly, like, kill you. Well, alright, how do I explain this? Uh, after killing the dragon, the dragon still has most of its power. Dragons, like many other magical creatures on that planet, the creatures aren't magical, they just, they have quirks, but the dragons, they're special. They use magic instead of actual quirks. That magical energy could possibly kill Deku, so he can't eat the dragons. He has to wait until the magical energy leaves the body. The magical energy actually preserves the body so that it can, well, soon revive the dead animal dead dragon after at least after getting enough well um mana into it or magical power and it takes a week for it to disperse but but the thing is you also have to well keep it act keep the body the dead body active so it can leave so yeah so deku he picks up the um the dragon well he puts he's still dragging the dragon he picks up raven bridal style and raven is basically sleeping and deku sees raven bloody all over and you know he takes her to the homes he, he takes her to the house and basically deku he doesn't really have any bandages he does not have bandages whatsoever he only has leaves a few leaves and that's all so he takes the leaves and, you know, he starts putting them on Raven's wounds. Now, over this time, he learned how to make medicine. Whilst also poisoning himself. <sighs> yeah, he made medicines, toxins, and many more poisons by also poisoning himself. So he's gained a great deal of resistance from poisons and many more. Not only that, when he first actually got to that, um, when he actually, on the second day of actually going around, he got bitten by a snake. It wasn't a big snake, but it was a really poisonous snake. Not really that poisonous, but, like, a mild poison that a person can survive on, can survive off of. So, yeah. Like, if you, if, like, if you manage to stay alive for, like, a whole week, yeah, you're fine. You're fine after that. So, Deku, he gained resistance to poisons, and, yeah. Like, not perfect resistance, but a resistance at least. Like, dragon poison? Ah, oh, that's killing him. And mana is kind of poison to Deku since, well, Deku can't really use mana. So, yeah. So, basically, Deku. He basically, um, hmm. <clears throat> How do I do this? Okay, then. So basically, Deku, hold on, I have to do something. Yeah, so Deku, he puts the leaves on Raven's body. Deku, he knows about the leaves that are poisonous and those that are not. And um, he puts them on Raven. Now, Deku, he also found some cotton plants. So of course, he put the cotton on top of the plants before he put them in. Because the plants, they're kind of, they're kind of going to be itchy on the wound. So he can't just put them on. So he put cotton on and that. So, you may be wondering, what is Deku's clothes made out of? Well, Deku, he used silk. He used silk from, well, animals. He used silk. Now, Deku, he uses thorns. Really big thorns. Not really, really big, but like normal, like, mm, kind of like needles, but a little bit bigger. Like at least mm, about one millimeter, like like two millimeters wide so yeah to make his clothes so yeah so basically Deku likes to wear shorts as you can see in the picture he's gonna be wearing shorts we thought that was a skin it's not he's gonna be wearing shorts he's gonna be white like Raven it's kind of disrespectful no Raven's darker he's gonna be white Raven's gonna be gray yeah that's better so basically Deku Deku he's basically um talking 
Well, he's basically talking to himself, just thinking about many other things. And over time, Deku has actually grown a hatred for Inko. Because, well, he finally figured out that Inko betrayed him. So, yeah, he finally figured out that Inko betrayed him. And he found out that there is no cities around, which means Inko, she put him somewhere where there are no cities whatsoever. And how may he know that? Well... He jumped on the dragon. The first dragon he ever defeated, he jumped on that dragon, which that dragon was flying out of control to get Deku off. Since Deku got a big, uh, huge grip, his grip, his grip strength is real strong. But it's gonna be even stronger. So, yeah. So basically, after three days, Raven wakes up. Now, Deku, he was actually cooking at this time. Raven wakes up, and... Deku, he's significantly fast. He's fast, but Raven can still keep up with him. And stuff like that, so. He wakes up. He wakes up, and... She... She gets into a fighting stance. But Deku, he appears in front of her, which she already knew was gonna happen. She was able to foresee... Well, not foresee it, but she saw Deku's movements. As Deku proceeded to pick her a bridal style, and she starts blushing unconsciously. Because right now, she's kind of emotionless. So let me tell you what happened. Okay, and this one Robin got with Starfire, Cyborg still got with Jinx, and Beast Boy, he got with Terra. Raven confessed to Beast Boy, but Beast Boy, he friendzoned her, and he got with Terra, which practically broke Raven to the point where she became emotionless. Not emotionless, but she would, she promised to herself not to fall in love again, so she, well, the same thing doesn't happen again. So... Yeah, that's basically what happens, and basically, she goes, and she's just pushing Deku, just hitting him, saying, what are you doing, let go of me, as Deku puts her down on the bed, and he says, lay down, as she says, what, as, as she's confused, as Deku says, lay down, you're injured, as she says, no, let go of me. As he says, no, lay down. As this time, he actually, Deku actually leaked a bit of bloodlust, which actually caught Raven off guard. Because she could actually sense his bloodlust. Even though she's a demon, she's a demon. So to her, sensing a human's bloodlust should be impossible for her. But her being able to actually sense Deku's bloodlust actually surprised her a lot. So she was thinking like he was a demon, but then she looked at him closely and she was, she was like, that's a human. Impossible. Because he has no resemblances of a demon whatsoever. And she's surprised. And she started thinking of him as a threat, because for all she knows, he could be an angel or even a god. As Deku proceeds to cook and basically Raven is just laying down. As basically Deku goes and sits next to her. And he takes out the spoon, and he says, ah, as she says, what? As she says, say, ah, as Raven, feeling embarrassed, she says, no, stop babying me. As right when she says, stop, Deku shoved that, shoved the um, spoon in her mouth. As basically, this was the meat of Zibor. Yeah. He made some stew out of it, and he was like, shit, let me eat that. You can give it to her. And she loved the food. Her eyes sparkled, and she loved it. Now, what do I want the house to look like? Let's go look for houses. So, yeah, the house looks like this. I don't know why he made it for two. Deku just got lonely, so, yeah. He made a house for two or more. He just got lonely. He was like, maybe I'll find somebody else. He, he didn't know that he was gonna, gonna find anyone, but still, he had hope. So basically, her eyes were, spark were sparkling, and he said, so he held out the spoon and said, ah, again. And this time, Raven was happy to open her mouth and say, ah, which Deku just continued to feed her. As basically, Deku says, well, I'm gonna go outside for a few hours. You stay here and get some rest. Raven, being Raven, she's prideful. Not that prideful, but still a little prideful. Not really prideful, but just not caring about anything. 
Like, she cares less about anything. Actually, she left the Titans. So, yeah. And Terra took her place. And Terra always boasted in the time she saw Raven. So, yeah. And that's why she moved to Azeroth, basically. So, basically, um... Nega goes outside and stuff like that. While Raven, she starts meditating. It was basically Deku. He's outside for at least a few, few hours, like two or three hours. And what he was doing was actually getting, well, more silk. He was getting silk. He was getting silk from silk bugs because he had a silk bug farm. Now, it wasn't close to the house at all. It was really far. He left them in their homes. So he went to the silk bar farm, silk, um, silk bug farm and got at least, mm, at least a few sheets of, sil of, um, of, well, silk, which he went back home. He, he, like, he got mm, about mm, 10, 10 sheets. As you know, Deku, he went home and he put them somewhere. He put them somewhere, like in a pantry or something, some short sorts. Well, not really a pantry, he made chests. Not like Minecraft chests, no, they can only fit like one specific thing, depending on what that thing is. But Deku, he's real organized, so yeah, he doesn't really need much since, well, he has the whole house to put things around, so he just puts the things like silk, jars of honey, and, well, cotton into jars. So, yeah, there's only three things inside of, well, one thing Deku, he makes to catch up by himself. So, yeah, you may be wondering, does Deku use electricity? No, he doesn't, so... Things like chicken nuggets, things that have to be blended aren't made. Deku actually uses his hands. He punches them. Like, he finds coconuts a lot, and then he just drinks that coconut water, or just fresh water he finds in that forest. Now, I'm kind of feeling sad after saying this. I feel sad. Alright? So, yeah, he can't use electricity. So, yeah. So, Deku, he proceeds to, well go look around for Ra for Raven. He looks in the same place where Raven is and he finds her meditating and she's floating in the air and Deku takes a close look at her and he starts meditating. Now, whilst Deku is meditating, Raven, she looks and sees that Deku is meditating and she finds this impossible since, well, she's possibly the only person that can do it. Apart from other people in Azrath, but out of everyone in Azrath, she's the more, she's actually a prodigy at this. And basically, she just ignores it and goes back to, well, meditating. But as they're meditating, Deku proceeds to get closer to Raven. Like he's just floating closer to Raven. He's not controlling it, it's just pulling him towards Raven. As if fate is just pulling them, st stringing them along. As you know, Deku and Raven are still cr sitting crisscross applesauce, but then Raven floats up and then goes down on Deku's lap, just sitting crisscross applesauce, and they're just cultivating together. Now, after an hour, Raven, she notices that she's on Deku's lap, and she's blushing like crazy. Like, she's a legit blushing mess, and she's just making weird sounds. Now, Deku is so focused, he can't hear this. As basically... Raven, she yells out, get away from me, as that's when Deku actually notices, and he opens his eyes, and he falls on the bed, and he says, ah, as Raven, now she's concerned, she looks down, and she says, uh, uh, are, are you okay, as Deku, he's rubbing his head, and he says, ow, that hurt, as Deku, he hit his head on the wooden part of the bed, and he says, ow, that hurts, as Raven, She's still a blushing mess, but she's able to contain it, and she says, Sorry, as basically Deku says, what was that for? As she explains what happened, and Deku says, oh, that's weird, I didn't notice that, though. 
Uh, it's basically Deku. He's he hasn't been in contact with a girl, but then he actually thinks about it after hearing it. He thinks about it because he wasn't thinking about it when she was saying it. He actually thinks about it and he well becomes a blushing mess. As then he looks at Raven. Raven looks at him, and the two look away. A blushing mess. A bless. A blushing mess. God damn it. So yeah. So basically, Raven after a whole week of staying with Deku. She's able to get back on her feet. She says she's leaving. And basically, she just dips on my boy Deku. And Deku, after that, he went back to being lonely. Which he just sat in the bed. And just rocked himself. He just rocked. Continuously saying, you're alone, you're useless, and stuff like that. Continuously saying the words that he has been hearing from people like his tormentor Bakugo, even though it was for like a whole week, it felt like an eternity for him his mother and many other people telling him he's useless he's weak he won't amount to anything and many more so yeah and that's to the point where Deku actually starts crying himself to sleep so then Deku's been crying himself to sleep even though he still gets up and hunts for food well no not really since well the hunting ended when he first found Raven that food was actually reserved for like a whole month that's a whole month's worth of food for Deku so basically, for that whole month, Deku, he just fell asleep. He just put himself to sleep. Now, it's about winter now. Like, it's about, like, winter now, because Deku is storing food, food for the winter. Now, like, winter's about to start. It's not winter yet. It's still fall. And then it's basically Deku, he's currently crying in his sleep as... Raven teleports to his house, teleports to his house, knocks on it, doesn't get a response, knocks on it again, no response, again, no response, as then she just says, fuck it, she goes inside the house, and she looks around. <clears throat> she goes to the same bedroom that, well, she was in, and she finds Deku, just sleeping. He looks peaceful, but when she gets close, she, well, sees him crying. She just sees him crying, and she does not know what's going on, so she takes a little peek into her brain. After saying Azrath, Metreon, Zintos. Zintos, yes. After taking a little peek in her brain, she, his brain, she just sees everything. Just sees a lot of words. The same words, but in different shapes and sizes. Some practically infinite, and some as small as just, well, an atom. As basically the words he sees are useless... Nothing worthless. Even sentences like you won't amount to anything. You can never be a hero. You should give up on your dreams. You really are a Deku. Deku. And the only thing that she could find, like the one word that she could not find was actually she could not find anything good. She could not find anything good. Good, like any good words. Even his own name he found as a insult or a ridicule. Because his mom, when saying insults to Izuku, she'd use his name. She says, Izuku, you worthless piece of trash. As Deku. Yeah, he got he got hit by Inko, but Inko still fed him. Shit like that. So, yeah, he just thought that he caught Inko on a bad day, but then he realized that Inko fucking hated him. So, yeah. So, basically, Raven... She, she saw that he even thought of his own name. His own name. As an insult. Which severely, she, which completely crushed her. And she's just thinking of all the things that she went through. And she's thinking that it doesn't compare to anything compared to this kid. He was born powerless. And he had a hard time acknowledging it. And people forced him upon him to acknowledge it. And she starts crying a little bit. Well, on the outside, while well, she's crying. And she gets out of his her, out of his head, and she just lays there, not behind him, in front of him. As she grabs Deku's face, I guess I, I don't know. She lays her hand on his face, and she says, "It's okay, Izuku." Well, or Izu, to be exact. Yes. She says, Izu, it's okay. As she says, 
I'm not here for you. As she is trying her best to calm him down, and she manages to do so. My god, how does this happen a lot? Yes, I have other orders to do, but we don't talk about those. As she proceeds to, well, actually fall asleep after comforting Deku. And they start cuddling. Now, we skip to the next day, which Raven wakes up first, and she's a blushing mess. She's a blushing mess. She's kind of trembling. She's a blushing mess, noticing that she's in Deku's arms. As Deku, as he slowly wakes up and sees Raven, as he starts blushing as well, and he says, uh, uh, hey, hey, Raven, as Raven says, hi, Izu. As she unconsciously says Izu and she covers her lips and Izuku says uh, Izu as he blushes even more. As well, like I wouldn't say like they're in the relationship where it comes to like, oh, they'd start kissing. No, they're just in a friendly relationship, which Raven blurred out Izu by accident. And basically, Raven says, ignore that as Izuku says, oh, oh, okay. As he gets up and says, I'll make breakfast as he goes and makes breakfast. Now Raven's just thinking to himself, why would I say that out loud? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And she's thinking to herself, is she sick or something like that? But then it finally hits her. She has fallen in love yet again. Which she gets pissed by this and she says, no, I will never fall in love again. As basically Izu comes in, Izuku comes in. Oops, my bad, didn't mean to say Izu. Mats Izuku or Deku. As Deku comes in and he has the food. As Raven blushes. After looking at Izuku clearly, he's cute. He's not handsome. Like in the picture, he's just cute. And Raven, she just blushes as Izuku says, are you okay? As Raven says, yeah, as she goes and eats. Now, over time, they got to know each other. They, Raven actually moved in with Deku two months after that incident. Because she noticed that Izuku, he wasn't mentally stable. First of all, he got abandoned by his parents inside a forest that he knows nothing about on a different planet that he knows nothing about, and he doesn't even know that he's on another planet. Not only that, but there's also the mental trauma and his childhood from his childhood and his physical trauma from the explosions and anything like that. And she finally noticed that, well, Anytime Deku is actually hunting the animals, he's quite hesitant on actually hurting them. And she wonders why until she peeked at his brain and she notices that, well, when he's hitting, he's attacking the animals. He thinks of himself like Bakugo, like he's bullying the animals, which actually hurts Raven even more. Seeing as he's going through all that trauma and she was just complaining her little hissy fit about like her and beast boy not getting together which actually made her feel real guilty really really guilty so yeah so yeah so she sleeps with izuku like she legitimately insists to sleep with izuku like izuku did not ask her she legit insisted on sleeping with izuku which actually caught Izuku off guard. Because he didn't expect that. Nobody did until your boy Lotus said it. So they've been living for a year and they meditate together. And Raven has gotten used to Deku always floating towards her when they're meditating. So she's cool with it now. And quite honestly, she even started to love it to the point where Izuku doesn't even have to float. She just grabs him and they start meditating together to the point where it's no longer meditation that they do. Well, they, they It's no longer just meditation they do together to the point where they started kissing and, well, <laughs> it ended in um, them banging. Or sexual intercourse and after like like right after like the whole like hmm 
after hmm, how would I say this? Like they they then they've um had that like sexual intercourse relationship for at least like five months. So like their current so like after like the second time in that in the fifth month, she finally asked, What are we? As Deku says, uh what what do you want us to be? As Raven blushes a little bit thinking of that question and she says, uh uh but boyfriend and girlfriend as Deku he smiles his idiotically cute smile and he says sure which Raven she got turned on by this and she grabbed Deku's thing and they proceeded to do it again as she proceeds to say while doing it I love you I love you I love you um I'm not gonna say it how 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 you would hear it you you know how it would sound like so you could just think of it I know I'm here for your entertainment, but not at that, not to that limit. Oh, that's, that's the limit, alright? Y'all need to understand. I'm a male. I, I, I don't feel comfortable with saying it, okay? Thank you. Don't, don't make me go through the humiliation. Like, I'm cool being called a simp, but that, no. Uh-uh. Yes, and I'll admit it too. I don't care if you a boy, you call me a simp. Shit, if I'm a simp, what the fuck are you? You're a fuckboy. You're a retard. You're not a gentleman. So, I'm not offended by it. But anyways, let's proceed with it. And plus, to me, it's not really called being a simp. It's called spoiling somebody. I'm more of the spoiling type. I spoil people. I don't simp for them. I spoil them. So, yeah. I'm just naturally kind like that. Like, if I have enough money... Like, if I have enough money, because I don't like having enough, a lot of money, unless I'm just buying, like, if I'm not buying things like clothes, food, or pants and stuff like that, I'm not going to buy a lot of, I'm not going to bring a lot of money. But if I have enough, I'm definitely spoiling the ass. Whether you be a female or a male. Not out of love, but because of my kindness. I may be a cold-hearted person. Yes, alright, because, alright, I'm going to actually start explaining this. <clears throat> I'm a caring person, but not at the same time. See, it's not depending on the person or their actions when it comes to whether I care. I naturally care about people. I care for everyone, naturally. But the thing is, that care, it, it also has its drawbacks. It, it makes me feel soft, which it's not like... So, like soft as in weak no it makes me feel vulnerable so i hide it a lot to the point where actually me caring and not caring actually became the same thing or to be exact the way i act when i care and do not care about you is the same so yeah so that's kind of how it works <laughs> so yeah raven and deku became a thing and raven celebrated deku's birthday with her Completely forgetting that, well, Trigon was still alive. Now, Deku, over this time, he's been training with Raven and stuff like that. Avoiding her, um, her blast and stuff like that. And since Raven was not in the Teen Titans anymore, she wasn't being held back by, well, the Titans when it came to her meditation. And as a matter of fact, her being with, well, Deku actually sped it up significantly especially when it came to dual cultivation yes if you know what dual cultivation is you know what it is so yeah so that's how it is so after they did that <clears throat> it's deck was 18th birthday it's 18, it's his 18th birthday, they celebrated his 17th birthday, and it's his 18th birthday, and Deku, he was just sleeping, but, you know, they're dating now, so, Raven, she got up, she got up, <clears throat> like, like, she got up butt naked, put on an apron, and she started cooking, cause she learned some cooking skills from Deku, cause she noticed that Deku, he doesn't have cooking skills, as a matter of fact, Deku, he actually experiments with a lot of things. His foods, his medicines. Hell, there were some times that she even saw him poison himself because of those experiments. Now, she was actually 
worried as hell when Deku first poisoned himself due to an experiment, but then Deku reassured her that this is the norm. This is not the first time that he has actually poisoned himself. But Raven, she didn't feel reassured because she knows now that her boyfriend has poisoned himself more than he can even count, which actually scared her even more. Ew, look at this chop off. Hold on. Oh. So yeah, that happens. And basically, um, yeah, they proceed to do that. So, as basically, Deku, over time, he got over his fear of attacking the animals due to him looking like Bakugo. Because Raven, she finally told him that this is a world of kill or be killed. So, you have to get over your past and kill. And Deku, that night, asked, how do you know about my past? And she explains what happened that day, and Deku says, uh-oh. As, basically, Deku says... So, you just got close to me because you felt sad, huh? Which actually caught Raven off guard by this as she said no. She said no multiple times to reassure Deku that she genuinely loves him. And Deku was reassured about that and he said okay. So basically, <clears throat> Trigon now, he's strong. Actually stronger than his prime self. Because now, he's not like his old self who could only destroy galaxies at a time. No, he could practically destroy universes. Now, Raven put a spatial barrier around that whole plane. To the point where that spatial barrier is actually infinite. Which actually expanded that um, whole planet to make it like infinites of times bigger. Not to the outside world, but in the inside it's practically infinite. Which, Trigon... He finally found Raven, due to her. If you saw who was calling, that was a distant relative. We don't talk about that, though. So, yeah, that was a cousin. Um, But anyways, um, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Yeah, Trigon, he found Raven due to her, well, legitimately leaking out her um magical power around with that barrier. And he teleported. And he went inside that barrier, which Raven immediately sensed Trigon. And she tried to find out where he was, and Trigon found them before that they found, well, him. And Raven told Izuku to run as she tried to fight Trigon, but Trigon overpowered her. He overpowered her a lot, to the point where Raven could possibly die at that point. She was severely wounded, as Deku... He saw this and he ran to Raven to protect her. Well, to shield her. Which, um... Trigon punched Izuku multiple times. Each punch was practically like two... No, not two. Practically like, uh... Like 5,000 galaxies clashing with one another. Just making a big-ass explosion. Bigger than the Big Bang. Well, no, not really bigger than the Big Bang. Since, well, the Big Bang is the start of everything, but... Shit, it's real strong, actually. Actually, the strength of the Big Bang. Yeah. Each punch is like the strength of the Big Bang, which Izuku is feeling the brunt of, and it hurts like hell. Izuku, he practically has many broken bones. His bones are broken in many more, and, and Trigon's wondering how the hell is this kid so persistent? He's wondering how the hell is this normal, breathing human being so persistent how as basically trigon just keeps punching actually he speeds up real fast until after at least five hours of punching he finally gets tuckered out tired to the point where he's vulnerable enough for raven to make a portal to suck him in and trap him again for another thousand years well it's a thousand years well, not a thousand to be exact, but a full, like, hundred million years. To Azrath, it's a hundred million years. But to the outside world, it's just two months. So basically, Raven, she traps him and he says, I'll get you, I'll get back and I'll kill you both. As basically... Izuku, he's severely weakened, he's broken everywhere, which Raven, she's more capable than him, so she actually uses her magic, the little 
bit of magic that she has left to, well, actually, well, teleport them on that bed, and they just slept. Now, while they were sleeping, Raven healed faster. She was completely healed by the time it was at least, mm, I'd say around 6, which she got up and healed Izuku. But then she noticed that Izuku was completely fucking healed. Like, she didn't even need to heal him. And she was wondering why. She was wondering why he was completely healed. So then, she ignored it. She got up. She made breakfast. And they ate. As basically, Raven talked to Izuku about getting stronger. Because, like, they gotta get stronger to beat him. That's when Raven actually decides that they're gonna go into seclusion. As she says, is there enough food for at least... A whole month a whole two months as basically he says yeah around this time it's um, around December no not December um around spring it's around March yeah it's around March, as Izuku says, I just need to get a little bit and we have enough for two months. She says, okay, as basically, they do that. Now, they go into seclusion, but Raven, she thought that it wouldn't be enough, so she puts a time barrier around them. Completely speeding up, stopping time on the outside world of the outside world, and also speeding up time at the same time in the inside world. So practically, slowing, she slowed down time in the outside world and speed it up well like all right it's kind of like a bubble anything outside the bubble is slow really slow super slow that means everything the universe time itself it doesn't affect gods or anything like that it just affects just the planets and galaxies and space itself no gods no nothing it affects the god it does not affect the gods well the people on the inside is practically years and years passing Possibly, it's practically eternities, and eternities are endless, which means infinites of years. So, basically, they go and start cultivating. Now, they cultivate like they usually do, and not sexual intercourse, calm yourselves. And basically, while cultivating, there's a shine. There's a shine. Raven's shine is as long as Izuku's. But there's a specific reason why Izuku's is long. As Izuku hears a voice and he says, Oh, so you finally awakened, huh? As Izuku says, What? Awaken? What do you mean? As basically, the voice says, Well then, my child, let me introduce myself. <sighs> First of all, what am I about to say? I'm not using the Lord's name in vain. I'm not using it in vain. I'm not using it in vain, so I'm not breaking one of the Ten Commandments. So, that is done. As he says, my name is Jehovah. But most people know me as the root word to everything in existence. God. As Izuku says, God? Then, what, am I in trouble? What, what did I do? Uh, uh, do you, as God says, hush, child. Don't worry about it. You're not in trouble. I just wish to pass on the powers of your predecessors to you. As Deku says, wait, what? As then God says, you will become an archangel. You will be a really strong archangel. Not only that, you will also have the name Morningstar from one of your other predecessor archangels who sadly is not in heaven if you know what i mean as deku he says ah you mean lucifer as god says yes as god tears up a little bit he says my poor son i'm sorry that i had to bring you down as basically Deku says, oh, okay then, uh, uh, what am I, is it gonna be painful? As God says, yes, it'll be very painful, cause your DNA will be switched for another. Not only that, 
it won't be just one DNA that your body will have fused within it. It'll be uh, practically thousands or even millions. As you may be thinking, but aren't there just four archangels? I said predecessors. That mean, that doesn't mean like the current ones we know of. For all we know, there could practically be infinites of, um, of archangels. Because archangels are kind of like prophets. Really useful angels, actually. Out of all the archangels, my favorite is Ural. If I said the name wrong, I'm going to get struck by fire. I promise you this now. And if you don't know who Archangel Ural is, I promise you I'm going to get hit by fire one of these days. I'm going to get hit by a fireball, hit by a burning plane, hit by a burning car, a bus. I'm going to die. But anyways, let's take our chances now. Yeah. So Archangel Ural, if you don't know who that is, that's the Archangel who actually held the flaming sword in front of the Garden of Eden after Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden tree. So, now the thing is, um, Ural was never released. He's still protecting the Garden of Eden to this day. Um, yeah, 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 I know, I know, right? And that is because, well, for no other person to go near it. I hope you understand that. <clears throat> so, yeah. So... Deku says, okay, then can I prepare or get at least mentally prepared? As God said, yes, I understand why you need to get mentally prepared. As Deku, after two minutes, he says, all right, uh, I'm ready. As basically, Raven, she's still meditating and she's feeling a whole deal of pressure. A real amount of pressure, real amount of pressure. Not from Izuku, no, from her getting stronger. And it's a lot, a lot, as a matter of fact. But Izuku is actually concealing her powers and under his power and, yeah, suppressing it for her to actually be able to control it a little bit. So, Izuku, he starts getting all of these memories, practically a lot of memories. Like of Archangel Michael, um, he's even getting the memories of Satan. Because Satan and Lucifer are two people in the same body. Not only that, he's getting um, the memories of them as pride and wrath. So, yeah. Um, Lucifer is the seven deadly sin of wrath. Satan, no, not wrath. Lucifer is pride. Satan is wrath. As there's Archangel Ural, Matthew, um, Michael... Um, you know, I legitimately, legit, was just researching on the Archangels just a few, like the main four, the main four just a few days ago, and I legitimately forgot. As, basically, he's getting memories of many Archangels, and it's actually hurting him. Let's take a mind, he's in his mindscape, but his body, it's hot as hell. Well, not hot, but like, his organs, his internal organs are just hot as hell. As it's basically burning on the inside due to, well, the many types of angel DNA he's getting inside of his body. As he's getting the memories of some, some archangels who are actually demons who were actually able to, um, actually climb their way from hell through purgatory back to heaven after billions and trillions of years. Now, those angels weren't actually rebellious. They were actually the sons of demons who actually rebelled against God. Now, to me, God is a, re a really forgiving person, so I think he'd let that happen as long as they're actually true with their words. So, yeah. Because, quite honestly, God, he would have he let this... He would have let Satan be an angel again if Satan just acknowledged his mistakes and actually sincerely apologized. So, yeah. All he had to do was sincerely apologize and he could have possibly, he would have been an angel. Not an archangel, but just an angel. Hold on. So, yeah. So, basically, they're both getting their breakthroughs or their powers of immortality or gods or goddesses so raven before she could have got killed but now after this breakthrough she won't be able to get killed deku he starts turning into this basically the thing behind him starts appearing and basically deku can make it visible and invisible deku's the only one that can see it even when it's invisible apart from raven raven can see it when it's invisible because well 
Well, she's Deku's girlfriend. Deku wants her to see it. <laughs> so, yeah. So, basically, Deku, he gets the flaming sword that Iro has. Um, many other weapons as well. Even staffs. The wing staff. Like, the staff, like, the... Like the medical symbol, like the medical symbol, but as a staff, yeah, with the whole snakes and the wings on the side. So yeah, there are many staffs. Um, and it's basically Deku. He's also getting the weapons of angels that are actually, well, are of, well, not lower class, but weaker than the or um, well, yes, weak lower classes, but not weak to be exact. Just the lower class angels, well under the um archangels archangels i feel like is apart from like god i feel like archangels are like one of the top classes that an angel can get and he's getting many classes their defensive mechanisms many more and echo won't need it because well he'll have a barrier barrier around him so basically after just two hours no well for raven it's just two hours but for izuku after legitimately, like, a whole month of suffering. On the outside world, it's a whole month. On the outside world, that is. It's just the world of suffering for Izuku. Due to the extreme pain, the memories, and stuff like that. He's getting mentally exhausted, but he's always getting hyped up by God and stuff like that. And stuff like that. He doesn't get hungry or anything like that. Because Raven's legitimately opening his mouth and, for and making him chew and swallow. So, yeah. So, while Deku was in his mindscape, God actually took over his body, you know. Well, not really God, he just put a piece, a fragment of his um, soul into Izuku's body to control his body, to like eat and stuff like that. So, Deku, he, he's, after like that whole month, he's finally able to actually get some, get a break, and it's finally over. As God says, it has been done. Well, then. It's good to see you, my son. Izuku Morningstar. As Izuku, he opens his eyes and he smiles. Yeah, Dad. As God smiles at this, because God, when looking at Izuku, he saw young Lucifer and the other archangels and fallen angels. As basically, he cried a little bit. Because it reminded him of Lucifer, and he actually said Lucifer. But, well, God, he had to get a grip because Lucifer made his own choices. So, he should accept those choices. And also, Izuku got Lucifer's habit of not lying. Yes, if you didn't know, Lucifer actually didn't lie. Lucifer doesn't lie. He may be, he may be the devil. Well, not really the devil. He's a fallen angel. The devil is actually Satan. Satan is the one who lies. Lucifer doesn't lie. Lucifer actually makes plot holes. He's the smart one between the two. I'm, I'm not saying like he likes Satan's dumb. No, he's just irrational. He's not rational and stuff like that. So yeah. So day train and now Raven could sense the um, seal on. Trigon getting weaker as Raven says damn it he has to wake up soon and like it's only a week before Izu before like Trigon gets out and basically Deku he wakes up three days later and he greets Raven they kiss they eat and they train their new abilities to get control over them and they got control over it relatively fast and basically that's how it goes and then the day for Trigon to come out comes out and basically they completely woke Trigon and Izuku being an angel can't kill Trigon so he just leaves but Raven on the other hand kills Trigon and as Izuku says why as Raven says well I had to as as Izuku says oh my god I'll ask father for forgiveness for this as Raven says yeah I understand why you couldn't kill him because I feel like angels and demons, they wouldn't really kill each other. Well, angels, I wouldn't feel like they'd kill each other, the demons. I feel like angels, they're not one to kill demons. More like restrain them and seal them away back to the demon realm or hell to be exact. 
so yeah so basically that happens and yeah so basically that month and it's summer again and basically they got a new house a whole beach house a whole house and stuff like that and basically raven asked kizuku are you if he's planning to go back to earth anytime soon as deku thinks hmm uh maybe maybe not and then deku thinks hmm it's been a while since i've actually been on earth but i don't want to see them as deku thinks well i have to get back to society one way or another as deku says yeah i'll go back as she says when are you gonna go back as he says september as she says september for what as he says hero's entrance exam as she says oh so you're gonna be a hero Stacky says yeah it was always my dream as raven says yeah you're right it was as izuku says well i guess i'll be going you could stay here as raven says no i'm going with you as izuku he says all right as september comes like it's not the day of the engines exams it's just a few days and basically they're in front of a portal they hold hands and they walk through the portal and that's where i'm going to be leaving it off guys for part one of what if deku was abandoned quite honestly i feel like i did an ass job of making this what if <laughs> but this isn't the first time but anyways i hope you enjoyed this has been lotus what ifs with the first part of what if deku was was um abandoned the redo why would I say the redo even though I deleted it so there should not be any trace of the first one? Well, because most of y'all already know I did the first one, so this is the redo. Hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Lotus What Ifs. Out. Bye, guys.